Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So yesterday I told you that I will be uh, five minutes before the hour uh, in every session, but in this case I had a problem with my internet connection, so that's why I um, didn't come like a couple of minutes ago, so, uh, but we are earlier today. Now we are going to begin because uh, I know that we have just one hour and we are going to complete the topics and activities that we have for today. And in this case, we are just uh, going to see the other uh, participants coming to the meeting, but we are going to begin uh, with the review. We are going to make like a short review of the topic that we were developing yesterday. Uh, because we were talking about something that is related to grammar, but you are going to give me a moment because I'm going to um, look for the document and also look for the platform. So give me a moment. Okay. Okay, I mean, just waiting for the platform to uh, be done. And we are going to continue with the last part that we were working yesterday. Uh, we were talking about uh, how to introduce ourselves and also to um, talk about other people and to make this kind of introduction to um, the other people. In this case, it's not just related to us, it's also related to other people in a meeting. And we are working with this kind of information in which we can um, not just give my personal information, but also I can uh, talk about other people that is around us in a, a space. And in this case, we are talking about um, something related to work or something related to a friendship or something like that. Then we were talking about the uh, possessive adjectives. And in this case, we were talking about the possessive uh, pronouns or something like that. We have the three different uh, forms that we can have on the possessives. Um, and we had some examples. And in this case, we have one more uh, activity that we are going to perform uh, related to the possessive. And we are going to continue from that part because we have the second exercise that we are going to do right now. And also we are going to work with the other two topics that we have for today. But give me a moment, this one is almost done because we are going to have the platform two. Okay, that's it. Now, we are going to see what is the second uh, exercise that we have here. We have completed the first one, and now we are going to complete the second one. And in this case, we have some uh, possessive words. And in this case, again, are the possessive adjectives. And you are going to find the words that we are going to use for this exercise. So in this case, we have the following sentences. We have just 10 uh, sentences and we are going to use the best option. So in this case, we have the words, my, your, our, their, 
her, its, and his. We are going to read the sentences and we are going to see what is the best option for all of these sentences. Again, I'm going to give you five minutes to complete uh, reading the information and also thinking about the best option. Then you are going to tell me your answers. So in this case, let me see, is a three. <clears throat> we are going to have five minutes. So I think like eight with eight minutes or eight with nine minutes like this. And we are going to complete this activity. Vamos a tener cinco minutos para leer esta información y decidir cuál es la opción correcta. Así que empezamos a leer y analizar cuál es el, el adjetivo posesivo que mejor le queda a cada una de estas oraciones. So, let's go.
Okay, we are going to begin with the answer. So we are going to see what is the best option for uh, all of these sentences. We are going to begin with the first one. They have a car. This is? Their car. Excellent. This is the car. We are going to move a little bit this one. We are going to have the answers here. Number one, there. Okay. Number two, the cat has a fish. This is? It's. It's. Excellent. It's, because we are talking about the cat. Excellent. Very good. Number three. Ali has many books. These are? Her. 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 Excellent. Hair books. Yeah. Number four. We have a dog. This is? Our, our, our dog. Our, our, very, our good. dog. very good. This is our dog. Number five. Uh, the dog has a tail. That is? It's. It's, Again, we are it's, using it. Very good. Number six. The monster has wings. Those are? It's, 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 it's. Okay, it's. In this case, we can use it's, but also we can use his. So in this case, it's like uh, we can yeah. use uh, two different words. Number seven. Uh, you have a Batman picture. This is your, 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 excellent. This is your Batman picture. Next one, number eight. eight. The dogs have a bag of bones. These are. It's. 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 In this case, we are talking about plural. We are talking about two or, or more dogs. Or. Mm. <laughs> There, 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 because if we can change the words the dogs, we can use the pronoun they. So in this case, is they mm -hmm. very good? Nine, mm. I have a teddy bear. This is my, my, my teddy bear, excellent. My teddy bear, and the last one, the cat has a blanket. This is it's blanket. It's, it's blanket. Very good. Excellent. Now we have complete this topic that is the possessive adjectives. So in this case, we have two different exercises in which we can see how to apply this information. We have the first one that is these um, sentences in which we add the, uh, the possessive adjective that is missing. And also with this one, we have the options and we are choosing what is the best option to complete the sentences. Aquí ya tenemos como las eh, palabras claves o las eh, palabras que vamos a utilizar para completar lo, las oraciones. Aquí ya nosotros manejamos más o menos como es esto de los possessive adjectives. Now, we are going to change the topic, but I need to stop this one, and I'm going to share again the screen, but in this case, I'm going to do it with the sound, because we are going to see the video that we have on the platform that is related to the topic that we are going to develop today. We are going to talk about the WH questions. I know that this topic is a very... Um, like we can see this topic a lot and maybe you have information from the WH uh, questions and what are the WH words and how to create WH questions and what is the information that we are looking for. But we are going to remember the information that we have about the WH uh, questions. And also we are going to talk about how to create these uh, statements or these questions uh, what are the elements that we are going to use and also what is like the information that we are looking for with every question. So we are going to pay attention to the video and then we are going to talk about the WH question. So let's see the video.
By the end of this lesson, participants will be able to ask and answer questions with B using WH question words what, who, where, when, and how. First, let's listen to an audio program and then we'll talk about it. WH questions with B. What's your name? My name's Beth. Where's your friend? He's in class. Whose son he? She's my classmate. What are your classmates like? They're very nice. Where are you and Luisa from? We're from Brazil. How are your classes? They're really interesting. When we use WH question words, we want to know more information. Therefore, your answer cannot be yes or no. It is necessary to know the meaning of each word so you know what you're being asked. This way, you will be able to give a correct answer. Okay, in this case, we have just like a couple of questions. Um, and in this case, we are like seeking or we are uh, wanting to have uh, more information about uh, the people uh, we are talking about. Or maybe we are just asking this kind of questions to obtain some uh, information that we need to know or we need to understand. And in this case, we have like... Um, these very specific questions like what is their name, uh, where is their friend, who is and he, what are your classmates like, where are you and Luisa from, and how were your classes. But she said something really important at the end of the video that we need to know what is the meaning of each of these words or the WH words to know what is the information that we are looking for. And we are going to talk about this information. I know that maybe you have a lot of information related to the WH words and the WH questions, but in this case, um, this is going to uh, be like uh, a review, we can say, so you can remember the information that you have related to this topic, and also you can practice the information that you have. So in this case, we are going to go again to the document and we are going to see the information that we have related to the WH questions. Así que vamos a hablar un poco de las eh, preguntas con WH words. Vamos a ver eh, para qué las utilizamos, cómo vamos a formar esas preguntas y qué información es la que estamos nosotros tratando de recopilar con estas preguntas. So we are going to begin. And then we are going to have like uh, uh, a lot of information and also we are going to have a lot of examples. So the topic is WH questions. And also we are going to talk about the answers because in this case, we are not just going to use the yes, no, uh, I mean the yes, no answers. In this case, we are going to use long answers because this kind of uh, questions, um, are like, eh, we know in Spanish, de uh, preguntas abiertas. Eh, ese tipo de preguntas son aquellas preguntas que nos permiten a nosotros agregar más información. ¿Podemos hacerlos con la yes, no question? Sí, sí podemos agregar más información, pero básicamente están creadas para dar simplemente eh, información básica, decir sí o no. En este caso, las WA questions son preguntas abiertas porque nos permiten dar más información a la hora de responder. So, in English, there are two main types of questions. Yes, no question and WH questions. The WH questions are questions that start with the WH words. And in this case, we have the words like what, when, where, who, whom, which, whose, why, and how. And the question words are used to ask about a specific qualities, times, places, people, and so on. Así que vamos a utilizar estas WH words para preguntar sobre eh, cualidades específicas, tiempo, lugares, personas y mucha más información, pero ya vamos a ir viendo más o menos para qué utilizamos cada una de las WH words.
Okay, now we are going to see the question word the usage and an example of this WH word. For this one, we are going to add something. And in this case, I need this one. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, ten. Okay, like this. So in the first one, we have the, um, the question word. And the second one, we have the usage and the exam. For the first one, we have the word what. What is the usage of what? In this case, we are going to use this word to ask about things. This is like more general and we are going to use it like uh, to ask about the different things and it is not like uh, related to people, related to animals, related. This is more general. Things. And we have the example. What are you doing? For example, what are you doing? What do you think about the movie? What do you think about the movie? Another one, what is your name? Aquí hablamos de cosas generales. No so, eh, vamos a hablar de cosas, porque lo vamos a utilizar para cosas, pero también lo vamos a utilizar para preguntas un poco más generales. Por ejemplo, ¿qué estás haciendo? No es relacionado a una cosa específica, sino estamos eh, <coughs> tratando de conocer qué es lo que está haciendo la persona. ¿Qué piensas sobre la película? Estamos preguntando sobre una opinión sobre la película. Y luego, ¿cuál es tu nombre? Queremos conocer esa información de la persona. Next one. We have the second one that is when. And this one is used to ask about time. We have the examples. When will the meeting start? When will the meeting start? And the second one, when are you leaving? When are you leaving? Estamos hablando de tiempo. No específicamente le vamos a preguntar, what time is it? ¿Qué hora es? Si no, estamos hablando de eh, diferentes eh, momentos. When will the meeting start? ¿Cuándo va a comenzar la reunión? When are you leaving? ¿Cuándo te irás? In this case, it's not just related to the hours. Uh, we are talking about a specific moments in a uh, time that we are in, in this moment. Now, number three, where? In this case, it is used to ask about... Um, Places, in this case, is related to places. And we have the example. What is my bag? Where is my bag? And the second one, where do you live? Next one, this is who, and this one is used to ask about 
people. In this case, people in general, uh, it is not related to um, things like the name or something like that, because in that case, we have the question word what. In this case, it's like um, to know something more uh, like we're not saying that general, but we need to, to know something else about people. And it is not just the name of someone. It's something different. And we have the examples. Who do you love the most in your family? Who do you love the most in your family? Who told you that story? Who told you that story? Aquí estamos hablando uh, de la persona en general. O sea, la persona básicamente no estamos preguntando sobre su nombre, así como lo hacíamos con el what, sino estamos preguntando por el individuo. Así como en la primera pregunta, ¿a quién amas más de tu familia? Estamos pre eh, preguntando específicamente por el individuo. Luego, ¿quién te dijo esa historia? ¿Qué persona? ¿Quién fue el que te dijo esa historia? Y podemos agregar, ah, it was my mom, it was my teacher, um, it was Maria, Juan, and we are talking about like the uh, person itself. Then we have the word whom. This one is... Um, also used to talk about people like who, but in this case, um, is related to the object of the verb. Es, eh, esta palabra la vamos a utilizar también para preguntar sobre las personas, pero en este caso es el objeto del verbo. No es como que estamos diciendo, who do you love the most in your family? Este ya es el objeto del verbo. And we are going to see the examples. And we have the examples. Whom did you see in the morning? Whom did you see in the morning? Aquí lo podemos traducir como a quién vistes en la mañana. Y aquí agregamos ejemplo de respuesta. I saw Mr. Mark, my English teacher ya que es el objeto, ¿verdad?, de nuestro verbo, porque fue a la persona a la que vimos, y pues en la respuesta damos, ¿verdad?, quién es la persona a la que nosotros vimos, que es básicamente el objeto de nuestro verbo. So in this case, we have the second example. And it says, who was Jim talking to? Who was Jim talking to? ¿Con quién estaba hablando Jim? También estamos eh, utilizando esa misma estructura. Who was Jim talking to? And we have like the answer to the same, uh, I mean, to the question in which we are talking about this, uh, this uh, people or this person, because uh, we can talk about one person or we can talk about uh, people, a group of uh, people. So in this case, we have the answer. He was talking to Jack. Jack is the object of this verse. So in this case, it's the person. 
um, in which uh, we are thinking or we need to know who was Jim talking to. In this case, is Mark. I mean, it's Jack. His new roommate. Then we have the next one that is which. And here, this one is used to talk about choices. So in this case, we're not talking about uh, people. We are not talking about animals. We are not talking about objects. In this case, we are talking about decisions. Um, I have two different things that I need to see, and I need to choose one of these. I have two options. I have two colors. I have two different uh, beverage. I have two different animals. So I need to choose between them, and I'm going to use this word to make my question. And we have the example. Which one do you choose? The left or right? Then we have thinking about that we are on a restaurant and the waiter is asking us this question. Of all the drinks in the menu, which one would you like? De todas las bebidas del menú, ¿cuál le gustaría escoger o cuál le gustaría? Next one, why? This one is eh, used to ask about reasons or causes. And we have the examples. Why did it happen? Why did it happen? I didn't understand. I didn't understand. Next one. Why is he crying? And we're going to have the last one, how. And in this case, you know that we have like different words that we can add to the word how, that it's going to give us like a very specific information. You know that we are going to use how to ask about manner in process, but also we have different words that we can use with how that it's going to give us very specific information. También con el how podemos eh, agregar ciertas palabras que nos van a dar eh, información más específica de lo que nosotros queremos saber. En este caso solo vamos a hablar del how en general, no vamos a hablar de las combinaciones de how. So in this case it's just a general information.
and we have the uh, the questions. How can you explain this problem? How can you explain this problem? And the next one, how can you get here? How can you get here? Como en este caso estamos hablando de procesos, también podemos utilizarlo para preguntar sobre direcciones o cómo llegar a un lugar determinado. Now, we have the different words eh, that we can use to make these WH questions. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about three different questions. You can choose whatever word you want. In this case, you can choose um, different words from the list of WH words. Uh, so you can create like uh, questions. In este caso, vamos a escoger tres palabras, tres WH words que podamos uh, utilizar para hacer preguntas. Vamos a hacer tres preguntas diferentes. Cada uno de ustedes va a tener tres preguntas diferentes. And we are going to do a, a writing exercise. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio de escritura. Van a escribir sus tres preguntas en el chat y las vamos a estar revisando y escribiéndolas en esta parte de la tabla. Here we are going to write the different questions. So uh, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. When you are ready, you are going to begin writing your questions on the chat, and then I'm going to read them and write some of the examples on the uh, document. Vamos a, a tener un par de minutos. Ustedes van a escribir sus preguntas en el chat. Cuando ustedes ya tengan sus tres preguntas listas, ustedes empiezan a escribirlas y las vamos a ir leyendo y revisando, ¿verdad? ¿Cuáles son las preguntas que están creando ustedes? Pueden utilizar cualquiera de las palabras que ya tenemos ahí. So, let's begin with the exercise. Okay, in this case, you are going to use whatever word you want to use. You can use what, when, how, why, where, whatever. So you are going to create three different questions with three different words. Okay, I'm going to begin reading these questions that we have here. 
And we are going to continue with the others when you are done. What is your favorite drink? Who is your mother? What is your sister house? When is your graduation? In this case, I'm going to change something. How can you learn so fast? Where is the park? What do you need to finish your homework? What is your name? Where is your office? How are you? Good. Where do you work? In this case, when are you going to visit me? Which of these? Is your favorite car? What is your favorite color? When is your birthday? Where is the zoo? When are you going to visit your family? What do you think about my new t-shirt? Okay. What 
What do you do after class? Where are your parents? How old are you? Okay, we are just going to have these examples here. I'm going to read the others uh, because we are going to do something else. We have, uh, who is the new teacher? What is the new pharmacy? Where are my keys? What are you, where are your department? Why are you hungry? Where does just your sisters live? How can you eat this thing? What would you do on vacation? When is your birthday? How many people were there? Who's that? What are you eating? How do I get the gift card? Where does he work? How old are you again? Where will it be raining? Uh, where will it be raining tomorrow? Mm, it could be. How are you today? Which is your favorite movie? Where are my keys? How do you access to the platform? Um, who would you like to meet? Uh, what was your work? When did you get your... When did you get your hair done, I think? What place would you like to visit? Why don't you eat healthy food? Okay, very good, excellent. You are doing a great job with the questions. But I'm not going to write all of the questions that you have uh, wrote on the chat because we have a lot of questions. And also we need to do um one more activity to complete this session. And in this case, it's something related to the platform. So give me a second. I'm going to move to the platform for a moment because we are going to read something. So, and in this case, we are going to read an article and we are going to like answer some comprehension question. So in this case, we are going to read an article that is called what is, what's in a name. So I'm going to do it like this because it's better for us to read this article in this way. I think I can do it like bigger, okay. This is the last part of the first section of the platform. So we are going to read this information and then we are going to answer the questions that we have there. Vamos a leer este artículo y vamos a responder las preguntas que tenemos en la plataforma. Así que vamos a tomarnos un par de minutos para poder leer este artículo. So, uh, it says, what's in a name? And we need to look at the names in the article. Do you know any people with these names? What are they like? So we're going to read some uh, information related to the names. And it says, your name is very important. When you think of yourself, you probably think of your name first. It is an important part of your identity. Right now, uh, the two most popular names for babies in the United States are Jacob, for boys and Emily for girls. Why are these names popular? And why are some names unpopular? Names can become popular because of famous actors, TV or book characters or athletes. Popular names suggest very positive things. Unpopular names suggest negative things. Surprisingly, people generally agree on the way they feel about names here are some uh, common opinions about manners from a recent, uh, I mean, about names from a recent survey. 
Boy names, George, average, boring. Jacob, creative, friendly. Michael, good looking, athletic. Stanley, nerdy, serious. Girl's name, Betty, old fashioned, average. Emily, independent, adventurous. Jane, plain, ordinary. Nicole, beautiful, intelligent. So, why do parents give their children unpopular names? The biggest reason is tradition. Many people are named after a family member. Of course, opinions can change over time. A name that is unpopular now might become popular in the future. That's good news for all the George and Betty's hour there. Ok, básicamente estamos leyendo un artículo que tiene que ver con los nombres y la popularidad de estos nombres, tanto para niños como para niñas. Hay nombres que las personas escogieron que no eran muy atractivos para ponerle a sus hijos y otros que eran muy populares. Y ahí tenemos las razones de por qué esos nombres parecen populares y otros no. <coughs> So we are going to be, uh, go to the platform and we have here the questions. Your name is part of your identity, yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes. teacher. Okay. Yes. We have yes. Yes, this teacher. One. Number two, people often feel the same way about a particular name, yes or no? No. No. False. 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 Okay. Boys' names are more popular than girls' names, true or false? False. 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 Okay, false. False. People are often named after family members. True or false? True. 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 Okay. True. Opinions about names can change. True or false? True. 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 Okay, we are going to see the answers. Oh, we have one that is wrong. Tenemos una que está equivocada. So, we're going to see what is the one that is not correct. This one, people often feel the same way about a particular name. So, in this case, it's not false. It is true. Esto significa que las personas a veces se sienten de la misma manera acerca de un nombre en particular. Eso es verdad, ya que hay personas que tienen el mismo pensamiento sobre los nombres, así como lo veíamos en las respuestas de por qué unos nombres son más eh, populares que otros. Aquí tenemos las respuestas. Number one is true. Number two is true. Number three is false. Number four is eh, true. Number five is true. So that is the end of the section number one of the platform. <clears throat> so tomorrow we are going to um, enter the section number two. We are going to see the um, the topics that we have there and the section number two. Remember that you need to work uh, with the activities that you have on the platform because you need to complete section number one and section number two for this first week. <coughs> Another thing that I want to say is that I'm going to send to you the document in which we are working uh, this week. And we are going to do it, uh, I mean, I'm going to do it to, uh, today because I want uh, you to have the information uh, in your hands. So, um, I think I'm going to do it after the, se the session. <clears throat> Voy a enviar el documento después de la, de la sesión para que ustedes tengan acceso ya 
eh, directamente a lo que es el documento y así puedan revisar la información que hemos estado viendo en, eh, en estos días. Apenas llevamos dos eh, sesiones, pero ya tenemos un par de información ahí. So, we are going to uh, have the document today and we can see the information that we were like uh, working yesterday and today. And also we can see uh, the things that we are going to do um, tomorrow. In this case, uh, we were talking about the WH questions and we have more information that we need to know about this topic. And in this case, we are going to continue tomorrow with this um. With this information, in this case, we are just going to see like the uh, general information about how to create questions with the WH words and why it is important to understand uh, how to create these questions. Vamos a tratar de hacerlo como un review, o sea, vamos a tratar de hacerlo al inicio de la sesión para que um, Veamos de manera general cómo crear estas preguntas con las WH question. Um, we are going to have some examples and then we are going to see the other topics that we have for uh, tomorrow. In that case, we are going to have a vocabulary tomorrow. And we are going to have something that is uh, related to grammar. So we are going to have two different things. Uh, the first one is going to be a vocabulary. We are going to learn new vocabulary. And also we are going to expand our um, ideas or our information with um, a grammar uh, topic. So we are going to remember something related to this topic because it's a basic topic. And now we are going to see more about this uh, topic tomorrow. So, in this case, um, para los eh, que tal vez no se recuerdan, ayer les dije que íbamos a estar entrando un par de minutos antes de la hora a la sesión y íbamos, obviamente vamos a estar terminando un par de minutos antes. En este caso, yo empecé eh, un par de minutos antes de las eh, ocho, así que es momento de terminar la sesión. Mañana vamos a hacer lo mismo. Hoy no pude entrar cinco minutos antes porque tenía problemas de conexión, pero mañana sí voy a tratar de estar los cinco minutos antes. Hoy entré como dos o tres minutos después. But we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow on the session number three of this course. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.